Hello, happy Friday everybody, hope you're all doing well. Today I want to look at another Clash track and some of you might have seen that I looked at London Calling a few weeks ago and that was a fun but slightly gruelling video to put together. It's one of those songs where there's a lot of stuff going on and there's some disagreement over exactly how it's played. I think the track that I'm looking at today, Complete Control, is a much more straightforward early Clash punk track but nonetheless I think it's a really interesting track to play. There's loads of great guitar stuff going on so I'm going to start by having a little play through. <laughs> So there we are. I think this is one of the great tracks from the punk era. It was a 1977 single in the UK and in the US I think it was included on the debut Clash album. And we've got some lovely riffs. We've got some guitar heroics from Mick Jones with not one but two great guitar solos. And another interesting factoid about this song is that it was produced by Lee Scratch Perry, which is pretty cool. I can't really detect much of his influence on the sound of the record though. Anyway, let me break the song down and show you how to play it. We're in the key of E and the intro riff goes like this. <laughs> So we're up here in the seventh position. This is all based on an E major bar chord shape. Fifth string root here. We've got the E note here. Then we've got a B, another E, and then you've got a G sharp on, on the B string. So it's a, an E major. Sometimes I think they're just playing the lowest three notes, which makes it an E power chord. And we're playing that several times. <laughs> And we're reaching over for this note here, which is the 11th fret on the A string. More of that E major chord and then putting down my little finger at the 10th fret on the B to make that an E sus4. And then going back to E. So. playing this all with downstrokes. I think most of this song I'm playing with downstrokes. I think that's the, the punkiest way to go on this. You could experiment with doing some down up stuff, but for me the best way to go is just digging in with those downstrokes. The thing to pay attention to here I think is the rhythm. We've got some syncopation, we've got some upbeat accents. So it's, the count is something like this. We've got one, two, three and four and one and two, three. 
so and then a similar rhythm in the second half of the riff Moving on to the verse then. And that starts out exactly like the intro riff. We've got this E major chord. Stretching up to that G sharp there. But then we're changing to B, so it's a, a B bar chord at the seventh fret. This time it's a six string root bar chord shape and again you're really just emphasizing the lower notes in that chord so it could be a little bit more of a power chord sound so Again, I think it's best to dig in with all down strokes on this part of the song. And if you listen to the recording, it's double tracked. You've got what I'm assuming is Joe Strummer in one speaker, Mick Jones in the other speaker, and they're playing basically the same thing. There are some subtle variations, but this is essentially the part that's being played by both of them. Now for the chorus, we've got some more bar chords, and this part is nice and straightforward. We've got a C sharp minor. <laughs> playing this down at the fourth fret a fifth string root uh, again it, it could be a little bit more of a power chord sound with this and uh, you've got the option here of covering the low E string as well with your finger that's barring and that puts the fifth of the chord in the bass and just thickens up the sound slightly and with each of these bar chords in the chorus you're letting it sustain for four beats so we've got four beats on the C sharp minor then we're going to an A bar chord at the 5th fret, then up 2 frets to B, and then across to E. And we're back to the C sharp minor again, and A, and then we're moving to B, and the last two bars of the chorus we've just got this little build on the lower strings of this B bar chord. So the entire chorus in time is two, three, four. Let's talk about the first guitar solo then, and I think this is a great little solo actually. And we're kicking off with some rock and roll Chuck Berry-ish type licks. So we've got one, two, three. <laughs> So this is all E minor pentatonic up around the 12th fret and we've got the double stop on the top two strings and then we're bending at the 14th fret on the G so So don't need to worry too much about the exact rhythm of that it's two bars of that kind of Chuck Berry-ish thing then we've got this lick So starting off with that same double stop, then we're going over onto the B and the G at the 14th fret. Got a little hammer on from 12 to 13, this is minor to major third on the third string. More of that double stop and then it's that 14th fret double stop, 12, 14, 12 hammer on and pull off on the G string. And then we're sliding up to the 17th fret on the B string. Next we have some of this heroic bending stuff up around the 19th fret. And I'm thinking of this as more E major pentatonic now. You could think about your E major, your E major pentatonic scale up in this position. And we're bending at the 19th fret on the B string and then catching 
the 19th fret on the high E string. I'm playing that with my little finger and I'm bending with my third finger. So, and then bending again, coming down to the 17th fret on the B. And then we're really just repeating that. And next we've got this little reverse bend. I'm at the 20th fret, I'm pushing this string up. It's, I suppose it's a pre-bend and then coming down. So I'm pushing it up just one fret and then coming down. And in isolation this sounds a little bit weird, but you've got to remember that this is being played over a G chord at this point. A slightly unusual chord change here. Uh, but this bent note is coming down to a G, so that's actually fitting the chord change perfectly there. And then we've got the same bending lick again. And we're just resolving the second time down a bit lower, so I'm coming down 7 to 9 on the G string. So let me put all of that together for you. One, two, three. So we go around for another verse and chorus, they're played exactly the same as before. Then we've got this lovely bridge section and what's happening here is that we're outlining the basic outro chords to the song. So the basic chords we're dealing with here are B, A and then two bars of C sharp minor. Then we've got D, A and two bars of E. And what Mick Jones is doing is, rather than strumming those chords, he's actually just arpeggiating those chords and picking out some individual notes. So if we start with this B chord, I don't think you need to play the full B bar chord here. I think you can just get away with playing the inside four notes. So I'm fretting the 9th fret on the A and the D, 8th fret on the G, 7th fret on the B. And then I'm just picking out three notes. So I'm playing the 5th string, the 4th string and then the 2nd string. Then I'm moving down 2 frets to A and I'm picking out the 5th string, 3rd and 2nd string. I think the actual notes being picked out seems to vary a little bit. I don't know if, if there's a regular pattern but what I'm hearing is this. And then we're strumming the C sharp minor or the C5 power chord. Learning that ring for two bars. Then we've got D to A. And the first time you're just playing these triad shapes. So it's a D major triad. Arpeggiating that. Then an A triad. And then playing our E chord. Letting that sustain for two bars. Going round again with just some slight variations. So we're going to the B to A. C sharp minor and then we're going up to D to A and the second time through you can actually hear the A string being played I think so I'm playing 5 3 2 5 3 2 and then E so that's the bridge section To the outro section of the song and to start with the rhythm guitars are just bashing out those basic chords so the same chords that we were playing in the bridge so it's just B, A, C sharp minor, D, A, E.
then we've got yet more guitar heroics from Mick Jones. And the outro solo kicks off with this lick. Um, so this is a, just a group of three notes. We've got 10th fret on the B string, pulling off to the 9th fret, and then the 9th fret on the G string. So... And the interesting thing about this, it's a, a group of three notes, but you're playing in an eight note rhythm. So it's that kind of polyrhythmic idea. And we've got, I think, four bars worth of this. So it's two, three, four. And then sliding up to the 12th fret there. And then more of the same. And a bend at the 10th fret on the B. And this is where it starts to get slightly difficult to hear what's going on. The solo is mixed quite low at this point. I think we've got a bend up at the 15th fret. And then some more of this kind of Chuck Berry stuff. Leave it up to you to try and decipher what's going on. I think uh, anything in that kind of style around the 12th fret is going to work here. Shall we talk about gear? I suppose so. I'm using my Les Paul today, and Les Paul was Mick Jones' guitar of choice most of the time with The Clash, I think. And my Les Paul is a 59 reissue from round about 2012, I'm told. Amp-wise, I'm keeping things really simple today, and I thought I would dig out my old Marshall combo, which not used in about two years I don't think it's just been sitting in the corner of my studio gathering dust and I'm actually thinking about selling it because I don't generally like to have a lot of gear around that I don't actually use but I thought I'd bring it out today because I wanted a bit of the Les Paul Marshall sound and was pleasantly surprised by how good it sounds I think it's a really nice sounding amp it's a versatile amp you've got kind of three channels on it there's a clean channel an overdrive channel which has got two different modes in it and today I was using the Overdrive 2 mode, which is just a little bit thicker and got a bit more gain than the main Overdrive sound. And that's about it for this sound. I don't think you need to overthink it. It's just a nice basic punk guitar sound. Quite a lot of gain, quite bright, so I don't think you need anything fancy here. And in fact, I wasn't using any pedals at all today. I was just adding a little bit of reverb and a little bit of delay on the solo inside the computer. That's it for this week. Hope you enjoy learning to play the song. If you're interested in detailed music and tab for this track, I'm going to put my transcription up on my Patreon page. I've written out the complete song and also included a few extra little bits that I can hear on the recording that I didn't really have time to go into in this video. So check that out if you're interested. Thanks very much for watching. I shall see you next week. Bye bye.